Frank, in today's world, science lays claim to be able to discern a great deal of truth in the world. Mm -hmm. Some try to deconstruct science and call it a cultural construct. I, I don't want to get into any of those kinds of so-called science wars, mm -hmm. but I want to ask you as a fundamental physicist to reflect on the sweep, the scope, and the limits of science. Okay. The sweep and scope is easy because <laughs> I've thought about that. and. Uh, I think the prospects for the coming years and decades are truly awesome uh, in fundamental physics which I, and cosmology, which I'm especially close to. Uh, we're going to see the opening up of a new window into the universe with gravity wave detectors. So this will enable us to see some of the most violent events in the universe and also go back into the earliest history of the universe in ways we haven't before. Uh, we will find out what the dark matter is, or at least refine our ideas. Uh, and I expect great discoveries at the Large Hadron Collider, or LHC, about the interactions of fundamental particles that might also help clear up the dark matter problem. In technology, I think in many ways uh, we're at the infancy of uh, information and quantum technology. I think at present, uh, assembling computers is essentially a two-dimensional affair. Uh, you have to be very precise about the interconnections with these clean rooms right. and very elaborate facilities. Uh, and also, any flaw can't be corrected. It's very different from how brains work, which are messy, sloppy, and self-assembled. I think we're going to see a fusion of those two ideas so that uh, com information processing, artificial information processing, will become three-dimensional, fault-tolerant, and, uh, and self-assembly. And that, that opens up the possibility of it acting with much greater power on, on a vaster scale, turning whole rooms, whole planets into, <laughs> into giant brains. I don't, I think that'll come. Wow. And uh, the other thing that's in its infancy, I think, is the understanding of the human, of the mind. I think we at present uh, have only primitive ideas about how this messy little ball of jelly <laughs> with, with an electric, you know, badly wired <laughs> thing manages to make coherent ideas to the extent it does. And we also don't understand what the basic drives are and how they interact with each other, really. I mean, psychology is, is really at the stage that physics was in with the ancient Greeks, I think, you know, <laughs> primitive pre-ideas, pre-scientific ideas. And that's going to change. And people will have much greater insight into why they're doing what they're doing and what they should be doing to make themselves happy. Maybe everyone will become saints. I don't know exactly <laughs> where it leads, but, but definitely people will have greater insight and uh, s psychology will go to a new level. So these are things I see happening for sure in coming decades, and it's awesome. <laughs> Do you see a contribution from fundamental physics mm -hmm into the development of these new kinds of technologies, such as quantum computing, which is a, a, yes. a hot area. And quantum <laughs> computing, for sure, because uh, quantum mechanics opens up vast spaces in principle, what's called Hilbert space. And people argue about whether there might be hidden dimensions or that space is six-dimensional or ten-dimensional. Mm -hmm. But actually, routinely, we work with much larger spaces in quantum mechanics. To do justice to uh, the known phenomena of quantum mechanics, you have to work in something called Hilbert space, which is really infinite dimensional. And uh, so the potential for doing things there is, is enormous. There's lots of room. <laughs> There's lots of room for navigating. Uh, at present, uh, we don't know how to navigate in Hilbert space very well, because it's, it's kind of a windy place. You always get beaten back to the shore. <laughs> this is called decoherence. 
uh, if you want to really navigate the whole space and be able to maneuver, you have to use new kinds of uh, ideas. And that's one of the things I've been working on. It's very, there are some ideas, and I don't see any limitation in principle but to, to doing this, but the engineering challenge, if you like, is uh, enormous. What, what would that look like in principle? These new ideas where, where uh, uh, new ideas in, in quantum theory can be applied in engineering settings. Well, the basic problem is you have to have a system that's either very robust, so it can stand perturbations from the external right. world, doesn't get buffeted by these winds too much, or uh, that you can isolate very, very well. Of course, there's a certain paradox there because you want to get information in and out. Right. And it's okay, you have to do that in a very controlled way. So uh, there are ideas along both lines. These things that are very robust is something I'm particularly fascinated by, the uh, existence of emergent structures within uh, materials that at the same time do exhibit quantum behavior and, at the s and at the, on the other hand are very robust against yeah perturbations. So this is the finding emergent strange properties that you can utilize is, is, is a fascinating area that, that I, I think physics has a lot to say about. And then also in this isolation business, you know, what, what is it exactly that you want to isolate? How do you get in and out? That, so that's a fun, it's, it's an engineering challenge in some sense, but it's at such a level that it really calls on the full resources and ingenuity of everything we know about physics. Say something, though, about the limits of science. Well, there are many limits of science. I mean, science itself discovers limits, like the second law of thermodynamics. You can't have a perpetual motion machine. Uh, there are very good reasons to think you can't move faster than the speed of light, so that's a limit that science fiction people find very inconvenient. <laughs> uh, we haven't gotten very good at manipulating time, and we may never, because you know, again, science fiction makes very good use of time machines, and we could all make very good use of revisiting our past to correct <laughs> the mistakes and you know, maybe exploring paths not taken, but uh, we don't know how to do it. Not only that, but every indication is that you can't do it. I understand practical experimental limits or theoretical ones like the speed of light, mm -hmm. uh, but are there deep philosophical boundaries beyond which science dare not go? I think the application of science, which I think is just rational thought, uh, can give insight into any question that makes sense. It may not give you an answer. It may tell you that the question is ill-posed or uh, that it will only give partial insight, but I don't think anything should be ruled out. And I think in particular, as we understand the mind better, that many of the things that at present are thought to be beyond the scope of science will be illuminated by uh, scientific insight when we learn what our minds actually are like love is a very important concept that you might not think is very scientific, but uh, it's correlated with the release of certain hormones in the <laughs> brain and activation of certain areas, and you can learn a lot about it by thinking scientifically and investigating systematically. It'll still be a wonderful thing. It'll still be love. The knowledge will enhance your experience, I think, but nothing is off limits. <laughs>